Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Today marks the day of my return to YouTube. Yes, I foreshadowed this last month, but I took the rest of May off. I had a lot going on last month and I really just wanted to come back when Star Citizen had a lot more going on. I actually got to enjoy the sunshine for the first time. I enjoyed the few weeks after my graduation of just being able to sit back and relish in the accomplishment that I had. And then I had an opportunity to see my twins, my two boys, Michael and Anthony, graduate from high school and begin their march forward into adulthood, which would have happened at the age of 13 had they been bar mitzvahed, but we're not Jewish, just my stepdad is. Anyway... I I tried my best to stay away from Star Citizen for that time, but it just didn't happen. I pulled away from my friends. I didn't go in Discord that much. I pulled myself inside of two different games. One was SWOTOR, Star Wars The Old Republic, and the other one is a online mobile game called Marvel Strike Force. That's pretty much all the gaming that I was doing. But then a, a news article published in Fortune magazine came out and it pretty much was a hit piece. I know there's people that said it was well written, it was well researched, but to me it just seemed like it was a piece that was trying to discredit Chris and Sandy and trying to create an air of confusing confusion and well, they, they were just trying to stoke the fire of doubt that Star Citizen is going to be a thing. Recommencing my YouTube career, it's not a career, but my YouTube contributions. At a time when Star Citizen is releasing 3.5.1 allows me to take part in the narrative. Now... What I'd like to do is I'd like to bring you way back, way back when Chris was actually on many of the shows, specifically his 10 for the chairman, the opportunities myself and other people got to interview him, and just all the different places that Chris was making sure that he was talking about his vision about the game. Chris's desire for the utmost fidelity in the game was such that it was going to cover every aspect of the game, every system, every single action that you could take in the game. So much as talking about what our NPCs would be doing when we weren't around, that they would still be running about their lives, wiping tables in a bar, going home, sleeping, getting up, getting ready for work, going back to work. These are things he wanted to build into the game. In this article, there was one piece that talked about how long it took for Chris to have them create a certain effect for the shields. And then the article goes back and forth about telling us about how other companies do this, about how there has to be a publisher, there has to be somebody in charge of the money, somebody that's going to make the game come out. When people that aren't part of the community write articles about this, I feel that some of the things that they're speaking about just are not going to fall within that spectrum of truth. And it's not going to fall in a spectrum of a lie or outright trying to manipulate the public either. It's just going to be a misunderstanding. Those of us that have backed from the beginning understand that Chris's vision was going to take a long time. In fact, many of us, as feature creep started to set in big time, just before they started to cancel the, oh, well, let's just say the goals that we kept on getting every time we hit a financial mark. So those stretch goals, when they went away, there was a lot of game that had to be produced. And when Chris started giving dates, I just looked at my group, the enablers, and said, it's just not going to happen. We're going to have to be very patient and sit back and wait for much of this to come out because it's going to take time to develop the technology to make those stretch goals 
into a reality. One of Chris's visions surrounded the purchase, the upgrading, the configuration, the customization, the personalization around starships. He wanted the experience to be much like that of walking into a car dealer and not just taking a car off the lot, but sitting down and ordering the car the way that you wanted. He wanted there to be packages, he wanted there to be paints, he wanted there to be different options that you can choose for your Starship. And it's taken a long time for them to put this system together. Now, I'm gonna warn you, many of you are gonna look at this system and immediately start screaming cash grab. And all I'm gonna tell you is that right now, this system is only going to be implemented in the online pledge store. If Chris's vision is accurate, if Chris's vision is honest and true, this system will be implemented at all of the in-game Starship dealers. So let's take a look at it. So to purchase a Starship or a game package, you head on over to robertspaceindustries.com and click on the pledge store. At the pledge store, you're going to see many different objects. I call them objects because that's what they are that you can purchase inside of the game. Now, currently, this is the only way to purchase a spacecraft. I've said that before, but you're going to be able to do this in-game in the future. So we're going to take a look at the system that they came up with. First off, you're only going to be able to configure a 300i series ship. So that's a 300i, 315p, 325a, and the 350r. The way that it's working inside of the game currently, the PTU, is that if you've made one of those purchases, you are going to be given a credit for that purchase. It looks like that's just going on in the PTU. I'm not sure if that's going to hold over to the Persistent Universe. Nonetheless, I want to take a look at this with you today and go over a few of the things that I find very interesting and talk a little bit about what some people might call a cash grab. So we're going to choose the 315p. It's going to start this online app that's pretty amazing and bring up a page that looks like it was ripped right out of one of the Origin 300i brochures. So we're going to be able to come in here and we're going to be able to pick a number of paint schemes. There are standard paint schemes and then there are premium paint schemes. The different paint that you could put on here is going to be the first way to personalize your Starship. You're going to have many ways to do it down the line, but this is going to give us the first way that we can do this. Now, this is where you're going to start seeing some changes. The standard 315P cost $65. That's not bad. And that's essentially just the ship. Personally, I have the Arbiter and I have the Pathfinder packages, which also have games and UEC and other things in them. But for the Starship alone, I think this is a great upgrade from the Aurora or the Mustang. And the 300 series, Chris Smith did an amazing job on. The different paint schemes are pretty nice. I hope they offer a wider range of paints in the future. But right now, how do you not go with that black and red? That's just hot. But you could also look down here. You'll see the red paint scheme. So far, we haven't changed the price of the ship at all. But if we come down here to the premium metallics, we just added $2 to our purchase. I know, you're saying cash grab. But this is just like in real life, just like if you're buying a car. You could just stick with any of the other paint schemes. You don't have to do this. Again, these are totally cosmetic and no different than what Elite Dangerous does by selling you paints and selling you weapon colors and engine colors and sending, selling you different things to put on your dashboard or instrument panel. So this is just a way after the game comes out, after development is done for CIG to keep making revenue to keep the game going. No different than skins that are sold in League of Legends. No different than cartel coins in Star Wars The Old Republic. So you can change the interior colors. Also, again, here there are premium colors, which I like a lot. I like the whole graphite look and the graphite look. And then something that I think is much less 
important to change, but some people might do it anyway, which would be the yokes. The yoke isn't one that you can be holding in real life. You barely even see it when you're flying. But if this is something that you want to do just so you can say that you did, it is something that you can upgrade. Now you have a couple of other things that you could do here. You can upgrade the seat. Again, I don't know if upgrading the seat is going to have an effect on stamina that you have, on your ability to take Gs, on your ability to sustain yourself in a fight. I don't know what it's going to do. Or if it's just going to be cosmetic. I could make my ship look better. Nonetheless, these are things that you can do. By choosing a lot of these premium options, I've taken the $65 cost of my, 320, my 315p and I've pushed it up to $71. Here's one that I really don't understand. I can see them adding in different beddings, different beds themselves, but you know, the minute you start forcing somebody to pay for a logo, you don't get it. It's free advertising, right? So even when Apple sells a Nike Sport Watch or a Nike um, Apple Watch, they don't charge you extra for it because Nike's getting the free advertising from that. So when you're looking at these different packages, just think about it from the point of view of going to order a car. In my, my instance of getting my C-Max, I really, really, really wanted to get that CarPlay radio, which I wound up not getting because the only way to get that CarPlay radio was to upgrade it to a package that also had a heated engine block and plug-in hybrid. It was over $6,500 more for that package and the radio I could just get a off the, you know, I could have just gotten a third-party radio for 600 bucks if I wanted to. But these different packages, when I'm looking at them, I really want to have a matrix of what each weapon does. I've taken the best of everything I can. I've added every single upgrade I can. And that $65 ship is now going to cost me the, well, it's going to be the cost of an anniversary edition of the Aurora, which was around 25 bucks extra. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not unhappy about this. And I will talk about this in other videos. I do not believe that this is a cash grab. I believe this is a way for CIG to sustain themselves down the road. And it makes sense that this is built into the game because we know the ships that are in the game are not the end of them. EVE has continued to come out with ships for the last 10 or 12 or 13 years and will continue to do so in the future. And that will be something that CIG will do in the future. And that will be something where they can actually make money from this. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this. Let's go and see the spaceship I actually bought, which was the Origin 325A. We're walking into the game now, and we're going to take a look at the 325A that I configured. And it's configured with the highest end packages of everything. The best guns, the best seat, the best paint job. And this one is actually an olive paint scheme that I chose from the premium section. I really like it. So when, I, when I'm, I'm looking at this ship, I kind of wonder, is it something that other people are actually going to purchase also? I think this is the only time you actually get to see your yoke. And you don't. You see what I mean? So I don't know if that's really an upgrade. So it really doesn't change much. What it does do is it gets my ship into the game finally. And I'm pretty happy about that. But I see this as something that's important because there are so many people that buy the same ships that being able to fly with your friends and, and see what they have chosen to me seems like something that is going to be a much, 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 much better experience in the game. When outsiders start writing articles about Star Citizen, sometimes I just feel they don't get it. It's very difficult for people to actually fathom what's going on with game development today. It bit Sean, I think his name was Sean Meyer, in the butt with No Man's Sky. It bit, oh, it just bit Bethesda big time in the butt when they tried to release something that should have been in alpha for a long time. It bit them in the butt. And it's biting 
CIG in the butt. Because when you're making the games today that are really looking for technology to be built to make them happen, they're going to have long alpha periods. Now, yes, Star Citizen went through something like feature creep. Yes, Star Citizen had to redesign itself twice, moved game engines, had controversy surrounding that with a lawsuit, had controversy surrounding people leaving the company and not liking what was going on where they were. But when I see what's going on with the game as a whole, this is an unprecedented <laughs> development of a game, it's more development of a universe, a virtual universe. The ship customization that's in the game right now, although it only exists on the RSI webpage, although it only exists for real money right now, to me is a step forward. It's a step forward to give us that feeling that when we're buying something, we truly are buying something that's personalized for us. It's not the cookie cutter spacecraft that came off the assembly line that everybody else is getting. It's the one that was built for me, the one that has my personality, the one that I have. This is my starship. There are many like it, but this one is mine. You know, folks, I can't say enough about this game. I have this hot and cold feelings about it all the time. I do get frustrated with the development cycle. I do get frustrated with the lack of information that comes out from time to time. But when things come out that just work, I'm pretty happy. Now, I know there are multitudes of people that are going to start screaming cash grab about this system. It's not a cash grab. And just like any of the other games that I mentioned, you don't have to partake in buying the extras. You don't have to partake in giving Star Citizen more money. You can just buy the standard ship and have a good ship, just like Hertz and Avis and National and Enterprise do. Well, folks, I think this is going to bring us to the end of this little video about the new ship customization system my first state of the game in a long time as we walk around my beautiful 325A, which I think is just gorgeous. I just want to say this. Thank you for supporting me, continuing to follow me. Don't forget to click that notification icon if you do subscribe. That way you get informed of all my upcoming videos. And please click the thumbs up button if you do like the video or really help my channel grow. I do have a Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash Batgirl. And I do have a Discord, and I will put the link for that down below. And we're going to start getting active on my Discord again. It will be separate from the enablers for those of you that are in my organization. All right, with that said, folks, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.